Code 1, civil priority. Isolation now in effect. To avoid the risk of contamination, please stay indoors and await further instructions. Well, good morning to everyone in Tribe World. It's Ray here. Um, I hope you're doing well in this uh, these troubled times and these challenging uh, times ahead that we have. But um, um, I'm joined with uh, somebody very special within our tribal fandom and a, and a great human and somebody who's very special to me in my life. And uh, it's a great pleasure to welcome Tom Hearn, uh, otherwise known as Ram, and the tribe and obviously Jets in Revelations. Good morning, Tom. Hi Ray, how you doing, my friend? Oh, I'm okay, buddy. Nice, nice to hear your voice. And and how are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you, Ray. Yeah, um, feeling very lucky and um, and privileged to to be where I am during these these times. Um, I'm here in uh, West Auckland at my my home with my partner in New Zealand and. Um, we're nice and warm and have got lots of food in the cupboards and we're both healthy and well and uh, so yeah feeling very lucky um, lucky lucky during these times lovely place up there Tom and maybe um, your fan base and the uh, tribal brothers and sisters around the world and the tribe fandom would be intrigued to know you you live in an amazing place it's a lovely place isn't it and could you just paint a picture to um, what, you, 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 you're outside today, getting the sun, and you're, you. What are you looking at? A forest, isn't it? Yeah. So I'm in a in the Waitakere Ranges, which is a, a native forest in New Zealand, and I'm looking at up at these big, long, straight trees, which are called the Cody trees, and in uh, in Maori culture, um, indigenous New Zealand culture. Uh, these trees, the Cody trees, are considered the gods of the forest. Um, so they're very special, and we're lucky to be living in amongst them. And a lot of bird life, you might even be able to hear some of the bird life in the background. There's lots of amazing, beautiful native birds that, that fly around the property. So yeah. very lucky. And you're close to the ocean there as well, aren't you, Tom? Yeah, we're quite close to the west coast. That's where I used to live for many years. Was actually on the beach out there at Piha, and uh, on the Black Sand Beach, where they've shot many movies over the years um, yeah, nice. out there, including films like The Piano, Jane Campion's classic uh, movie, was shot out there, and Xena and Hercules were shot out there. So I lived out there for many years, um, but about two years ago, moved from the beach to the forest. Quite a different energy. That's lovely. And, and Tom, how are you coping with this lockdown? And I mean, the most of the world is so many countries there facing a similar dilemma. What? How are you getting through? Are you you're, you're getting through each and every day? And if so, what, what are you up to? How do you how do you pass the time? Yeah, no, I'm actually doing really well in the lockdown. Thank you, Ray. Um, I feel like I came into this lockdown period in quite a good space um, emotionally and mentally. Um, and have, have been taking care of myself of late, so I, I felt pretty good coming into it. Um, but I've still had work to do um, during this time, which has kept keeping me busy, so running my business. and um, and But I've also been doing a lot of meditation and, and quite a lot of fitness. Uh, so, you know, uh, I'll get up in the morning, and Jackie, my partner, and I will usually meditate for an hour, uh, to start the day and then you know we might go for a walk and then I'll settle into some work um, for the morning and uh, stop for some lunch and I've been doing uh, these amazing fitness groups online with my friends from the gym where we all jump on a zoom call and uh, we do a workout together about 10 of us and it's just a nice way to stay connected as a group um, and we don't even really talk too much to each other. We just sort of do the training and then say, oh, thank you guys and, and carry on. But that's that's a nice thing that I've been doing in the middle of the day. Um, and then, you know, back to work. But I've sort of been finding that I've been working, a bit, you know, more balanced hours. I can be a bit of a workaholic, Ray, and, and, and sort of burn the candle at both ends. But I've, I've had a bit more balance during the lockdown. So... 
you know, I, I, the other thing I would say that I've been trying to do is just moderate really my my intake of media and of the news, which I find can be, you know, quite shocking and confronting. And, and it's just finding that balance of, you know, watching enough to understand what's going on, but not watching so much that I flick into sort of overwhelm or um, freaking out about what's going on in the world. So, yeah, that's how I've been approaching it. Yeah, well done and good for you, uh, Tom. And a lot of we'll we'll get into some of your. Um, I mean, a lot of the uh, the listeners around the world may or may not know that Tom um, has gone on to. I mean, he's he's, he's one of uh, an amazing uh, talent and one of the greatest producers that we've got coming out of New Zealand. Very exciting times following in Takia's uh, footsteps and Peter Jackson. This uh, uh, when I tell you, folks, you all know Tom is very special. But I've had the privilege of. Uh, Tom is a very good friend of mine, and and I treasure that very much. And we share a lot uh, in common. I mean, uh, we're about the same age. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I've got a couple of years on you, Ray. <laughs> a bit younger than you, Tom. That, uh, but we've we've uh, shared a lot. And Tom, it's interesting. You, you're speaking in a very uh, lovely way, actually. And I think it will calm a lot of um, a lot of your fans around the world. We. I mean, the, the, the aspect of this is to maybe try and give uh, some of the folks uh, an hour away from the respite from all that's going on and entertain them and uh, get some background information on uh, uh, areas that they may not know of uh, uh, you. But also, yeah. there's some people who are, have, uh, as they've always done with the tribe, they look at the tribe as a as a form of refuge, as they take some comfort as uh, some of the... Uh, where they've come of age with a series that's guided them in many ways. And, and Tom, have you any uh, thoughts um, and any advice you could give to anybody that's maybe feeling a bit anxious at this time and a bit frightened, and understandably so? What, what's your uh, advice to anybody that's uh, feeling just that it's a, uh, they're struggling? Yeah, well, as I say, um, I, I think, you know, for me, what is really, I can only speak to what's been helping me and um, for me, I have been just finding that, you know, moderating that intake of of news and media and even social media throughout the day to just make sure that you're not overloading your system um, with anything that, you know, with, with too much of this this information, which is a lot to take in and, and can be quite scary and confronting and, and worrying. Um, and I think, you know, there's a balance to strike there where maybe you could set yourself, you know, a certain amount of time each day, like Jackie and I have been saying, you know, we might watch the news for an hour in the evening and get the information and updates that we need, but not sit there in front of the TV and sort of, um, overload on the crisis, I guess. I think that's, you know, a, a piece of advice that I would give and, um, you know, the other advice I would give is really take care of yourself during this, these times because, um, you know, sometimes it can seem like a selfish thing to do to look after yourself and eat well and, and you know, uh, you know, stay fit and healthy and, and, and you know, do whatever sort of spiritual practice or, or uh, mental and emotional practice you need to stay healthy. But it's actually a kind, generous thing to do. No, I think that's really good advice, Tom. And, um and um, and so yes, yeah, so, so certainly like on airplanes where they say, um, you know, when the oxygen mask go down, give yourself oxygen first, so that you can then give oxygen to those you love and those around you. And so I I think you're you're quite right to uh, take out some time for yourself, a eh, to look after yourself, because that's very important, and that's uh, mentally, physically, spiritually. Hundred hundred percent, yeah. And I think like. You know, we can actually, if if you know the listeners out there are lucky enough to you know be be somewhere safe and uh, you know and and have a meal on their plate, you know this can be an opportunity for us. I think you know for a little bit of a reset, for an opportunity to to take a breath, to pause and and to nourish ourselves, Ray. You know, um, so, so yeah. And yeah, and I mean the other the other element is anybody that's struggling never to be frightened to to pick up the phone and uh, and and be honest. It's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength to say, look, I'm I'm hurting. I'm struggling. 
I need to talk. So talking, communication is very therapeutic, isn't it? Some some folks are alone at this time, and I bet you you can always pick up the phone. So so that's very very important. And and Tom, if, if I may, I'd like to. I mean, sadly, we lost a very special actor, the gentleman on Shortland Street, and who was in our Revelation series, and um, you know who struggled with depression and. And you've had some issues in that respect yourself, haven't you? Do you mind uh, maybe talking about that? Yeah, no, for sure. Um, yeah, that's right. Um, Poor, who who passed away um, recently, was was a was a good old buddy of mine, and and um, yeah, got a lot of love for for Poor. Um, but yeah, in terms of my own mental health, um, yeah, I've definitely gone through periods ray when uh when my depression has been uh, quite difficult to manage um and you know really uh quite quite sort of confrontational and a, and a struggle for me um um but yeah o- over the years you know i just try and continue to build up a toolbox to uh to manage that depression i guess um um, but yeah, it's ongoing. Um, it's, it's not something that I've become a master of. Um, but I think as I get older, I am ending up with more tools in that toolbox. Well done. And you, you actually went off to Japan, didn't you? On a bit of a retreat to, to, uh, try and, uh, get in tune with, with, uh, with a lot of different dimensions within your life. And how was that, Tom? Did you enjoy that? Yeah, that's right. So um, over the years, I've experimented with uh, with different forms of meditation, um, which I've found has been really helpful with my mental and emotional health. Um, and initially, I just started meditating on a, on an app on uh, on my phone. Um, this woman, Mary Maddox, who uh, I came across, who gave these lovely, quite short you know, 10 minute kind of guided meditations. And I just found it to be really calming um, and and really enjoyed it. And so I sort of, I would come and go with this practice of meditation um, over the years, especially when I was desperate, I would turn to it, you know, as, as a kind of, as a practice of, of refuge. Um, But then a couple of years ago, I, uh, I decided to take the leap and actually uh, try out this this uh, meditation practice called Vipassana meditation. Uh, and uh, this Vipassana meditation, they have centers all around the world, Ray, um, where you go and you meditate for 10 days, uh, eight to 10 hours a day of meditation. And wow. it is completely silent, so no speaking to each other. No eye contact of anyone that's on the retreat, and uh, it is a very intensive uh, meditation retreat. And actually, I had a couple of friends who had tried this out, and I'd seen this amazing benefit uh, that they were getting from the course. And one of them actually was James Napier Robertson, uh, who who played uh, Jay uh, on the tribe. Um, a very old dear friend of mine, of course, and um, and when we were acting on Power Rangers together many years ago, when we were young party animals and used to get up to no good all the time, um, I, I remember him sneaking away to do this Vipassana meditation retreat. And when he came back, he was just in such an incredible space that it, it really hadn't made an impression on me. But at the time, I was too scared myself to uh, go and try this thing out. Um, and, and so I didn't do it at the time. Um, but then, yeah, two years ago, I, I, uh, I headed off to, uh, to Tokyo and, uh, got on the train and headed about an hour out of Tokyo. And I went and did this Vipassana retreat and it has really, Changed my life, I would say, Ray. Like had a had a had a very uh, deep impact on on the way I approach things. It's very very interesting, Tom, because in in many ways, I mean, you know, you and I have always connected on a on a, a lot of levels, really, and spiritually, certainly. And uh, you're what I would refer to as a real kindred spirit. And and it's interesting because you know you've had tremendous successes, and 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 I've been lucky. I've had some. Uh, 
some uh, lucky breaks in my life. And, and sometimes when you achieve what you're trying to achieve and getting your dreams is an emptiness and a need to find something more. And, um, and maybe that's the pain of being a creative soul. You were very creative and, and very gifted, if I may say so, without embarrassing you. You've got a wide range of interests, but you're a very sensitive person. And, um, and, 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 and what, one thing, actually, speaking about James, I had a, a, the pleasure of hosting James and Tom a couple of uh, a little while back on at the vineyard. And we, and James and I, of course, we love uh, Pinot Noir. We're both wine lovers. And I know you, <laughs> you, you remember the night, Tom? And I think James and yes. I, we sat there till the early hours of the morning. And we had gone through too many bottles, I think. I was in the doghouse <laughs> with my wife. And, and you, Tom, you were, I, I thought this is weird. You were, you were having like um, cups of tea and, and uh, orange juice. And, that, and I thought, that's not the Tom I know. So, Tom, you, you've been dry now for about two years. You've been on the wagon, haven't you? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so, no, it all does tie together, Ray. You know, like uh, those things of being a sensitive soul, you know, um, I'm definitely a sensitive sort of person emotionally. And, um, you know, as as I say, at times that sort of manifested in this depression, Um you know, and uh, and sometimes I, you know, like a lot of people out there, I find life really tricky, you know. And so for me, a lot of these practices or choices that I've made in my life are just about simplifying things. And, um, you know, as much as I, I love the good Pinot as much as the next guy, especially your amazing uh, Pinot, Ray. Um, but for me, uh, it just added, the drinking added another layer of com- complication to what is already a very complicated world, you know, for me. And so, you know, I would already be finding it difficult to just navigate my emotions and navigate, you know, things from my past that would bother me, things from the future that I was worrying about. So I was was constantly in a state of worry. And you know, then if I would have a big night on the on the Pinot to try and get some relief from that worry, the pro- it would work. But the problem would be the next morning I would wake up and it would be compounded with this with this hangover and and the anxiety often when I was hungover would be you know very intense and and sometimes I would think back about what I was behaving like when I was drunk, you know, and I would hate myself for that. And it was just this cycle that. I decided I could do without, <laughs> and and I have to say, you know, life has been has been a lot simpler um, yes. this sober life, and I've I've been thoroughly enjoying it. Um, yeah, it's interesting, Tom. The 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 you know, being creative, uh, we we're all I think anybody that creative, we kind of tend to be a bit addictive, eh? And um, you know, like you can become a workaholic or you you work you passion i mean it's not making widgets it's it's something that that is all consuming whether you're acting writing doing music and and it is it's uh it's a danger and, and it's almost like for comfort eating a lot of it i mean i'm finding myself uh um during the day i love i got ice cream come in my ears you know and uh, and, it's, <laughs> and cakes and uh, and this kind of <laughs> Well, there's always something, no, so I've knocked off the booze, but I've still very much got a sweet tooth, Ray, that I assure you, and, uh, well, you and cook- no, like- that... Are you into cooking? Do you, do you do that? Oh, love cooking. Absolutely love cooking. Oh, nice. um, I think that's a great thing to do for the soul, and, and especially, you know, during this lockdown, that's something... You know, provided we can get access to groceries and things, it's a it's a great time to learn some new cooking skills uh, with all of the restaurants closed and everything like that. Um, well, it's a beautiful skill to have cooking. Um, yes. My big brother actually taught me how to cook, Ray. Um, Jeffrey, who I think you remember from That's over right. the years. He's a musician as well, actually. That he's a good musician. And, and, uh, yes. No, is that lovely? That, 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 and what's your favorite dish to cook, Tom? Ooh, oh, I love to make a good curry. Absolutely love it. 
Um, and that's a good labor of love on these uh, days when we've got a bit of extra time on our hands because they take quite a bit of time to make a good curry. Um, and I love a good pasta as well, Ray, because the, the, the great thing about a pasta, you can you can make one, you know, usually with whatever scraps you've got left over. You're going to have to make me. You know, my mouth is watering just thinking about it. Actually, I love curry. And, and, and Tom, I have to say that, that uh, cooking, I love it, but it's not one of my skills. Next time you're down there, I'm going to make you the, the best beans on toast you've ever had. I can, that's, that's about, <laughs> it's, I mean, you'll love it. And uh, so we'll, I'm, I'm going to, nice beans on toast, Earl Grey tea, or a nice, I'm going to get a nice cup of tea. I was just going to say another famous dish of mine, which I copied off of uh, Jamie Oliver, Speaking of cups of tea, is the green tea salmon. That's a great one. You just you rip open the uh, the t green tea bag and put that over the uh, outside of the salmon with some salt and pepper, a bit of olive oil. That's a lovely seasoning, Ray. The green tea salmon. Google it. It's a beauty. I try a bit of that. I've tried Pinot Noir in my cornflakes. That tastes pretty good as well. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, I believe you. Yeah. yeah, no, I mean, I do. It's it's terrible when you got it on tap. As uh, so, Tom, I got. I'm I'm hogging you here, and all the. Uh, I've, we've got a ton of questions. So this is from Kate McDonald. Good morning, Kate. How did you find acting, Ram? Some of his scenes, like being dumped on the rubbish tip, where you were, were spitting, were really intense. Did you find it hard to get into his character with his unique traits and obviously obviously dislikes for people? Thank you for playing him so well. Interesting question. Ah, that's such a lovely, uh, lovely question. Um, I loved playing Ram. Like, come on. It's way more fun to be the bad guy than the good guy. <laughs> no doubt about it. I, and, I mean, for to be such a young actor and play such a complex, you know, multi-dimensional character that you created, Ray, um, that was an honor and a privilege, and every day was so much fun. I just, I absolutely loved playing him. Um, and you yeah. did, I have to say, you, 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 with your talent, Tom, you did an amazing, amazing job on that. And, uh, and, and the characters touched, uh, you know, become, I mean, such a popular, such a popular character. So this is from Lily J. Smallman. Good morning, Lily. That, Hi, Tom. Thanks for taking the time to answer our questions. I've got an interesting one, I hope. I'm not sure if you're aware, but there are a fair number of tribesters who theorize that Ram might have been bisexual. Um, that's an interesting take. Um, I was also, it was also implied in one of the books. I've always felt this interactions with certain other characters, particularly during season five, definitely gave off this energy. And you know what they say, no smoke without fire. Do you have any thoughts on this theory? That's a really very, very interesting, uh, interesting question, Lily. Yes, that's a fantastic question. Well, I wasn't, um, I wasn't necessarily playing Ram as uh, bisexual, but I think a lot of uh, his relationships, um, he he often came at those relationships from a sort of power play perspective, which I, I found interesting and fun. And so, you know, I think he got off in a way on jousting with other men in terms of who had the power and, um, you know, potentially at times that uh, sort of moved into a zone that was, that could have read as, uh, as sexual. Uh, which I actually think is pretty cool. Like, uh, I really like that that was a layer that was coming through, even if it wasn't what I was intending intending to uh, play. Um, so that's a fantastic question. And, yeah, if there was any bisexual undertones, they were uh, they were subconscious for, for me. But um, but I, I loved that layer. Yeah, do you know, Tom, I mean, that's a very, very interesting uh an, an interesting element that, that Lily has, uh, um, has made surface because when I was briefing AJ Penn, who uh, did our tie-in novels, we discussed this, and 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 Lily is quite right that we've kind of um, alluded to that in the tribe books without getting too much into it. Again, we can't give any spoilers. You're you're a fan of the books, Tom, aren't you? 
Yeah, love the books, Ray. It's so great for the stories to continue. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. Unfortunately, we can't get into it because some people haven't read them, so we don't want to spoil it. But um, we did uh, kind of uh, allude to that because uh, we were able to open it up a little bit and to uh, push the boundaries a little more than we can in broadcasting. That uh, now I've got one here from Michelle Monahan. Good morning, Michelle. How do you think Ram would respond to the current virus situation in the world? because of his paranoia with germs? Would he revert back to his old ways when he didn't walk, or would he take it in his stride and tackle it in a different way? I mean, it's interesting with the germs. Um, and uh, I don't know if you remember, Tom, way back in the, probably the first few days where we were discussing um, uh, Ram and, um, and how he was paranoid and the germaphobe. And um, Do you remember that? I mean, and... Uh, yes. Yeah, because in my, my mind, it's interesting because I... I thought within the subtext that, uh, I mean, you know, we pick up the tribe uh, post the adults, post the lead up to the virus, so to speak. But I was always thinking that as we are, I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm sick and tired of washing my hands, you know, and uh, I mean, it's just yeah. I've got no skin left and, and paranoid with, I mean, washing, like wiping down groceries. So in my head, that's why I mentioned it to you when, we first started, I thought, pomps, perhaps the, uh, but, um, I mean, what, what do you, how do you think Ram would respond to the current virus situation? Uh, I think it would be pretty tough going for, for our mate Ram, don't you, Ray? <laughs> I think, uh, I think he'd be doing it pretty tough, uh, right now. And, uh, he'd be taking all measures possible to not be exposed to those bugs. And I think it, you know, it would make him, uh, pretty fearful. Um, and so he'd be stockpiling toilet paper like the rest of the world, perhaps. That's right. That, uh, you know, that that's what I'm, I'm forever <laughs> on to. That's my, that's become the new gold. And here in Australia, well, I'm, I'm stranded. I mean, for some reason, it, it, you just can't get any, you know. And so uh, it's these little things that I'm working out thinking, my God, what happens if, uh, if we can't get any, you know. I mean, I'm luckily in a garden where we've got nice leaves and things like this, but uh, you'll be okay in the forest there. But uh, if we run out of toilet paper, <laughs> it, 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 it's just extraordinary. What, 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 things that you take for granted and don't appreciate. And I mean, the other day I was able to get two rolls and I thought, wow, this is pure heaven. This is, uh, this is amazing. I mean, life is good. I got toilet paper. It's extraordinary, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, it is a good leveler in that way. I think like it's an opportunity for us all to just realize that we don't actually need as many things or as much stuff as, as, as we perhaps thought we did. You know, it's, it's this kind of reverting to a slightly simpler, slightly slower life that actually feels really good. Um, but no, the toilet paper thing is out of control. So I'm sure Ram would have plenty of that, no doubt about it. He he uh, he he would uh, he would be at the top of the food chain, so to speak. <laughs> no, that's sort of it. Now I've got an, an interesting question from Megan Boss. Good morning, Megan. Um, what's your favourite acting, directing, or music, or producing? Uh, she's also added here. I still have my autograph Theodore High CD. I got many years ago. Any new music projects from you? Also, I just wanted to thank you for being so awesome when you came to Dragon.com. I was beyond excited to meet all the cast, and you were all so down-to-earth and kind to your fans. It made my 16-year-old dreams come true, and I still treasure those memories of meeting you and the cast to this very day. Lots of love to you, Tom. That's a lovely, uh, lovely question. Ah, that's too kind. Yeah, well, it was our pleasure to come to DragonCon, and... um. And I'll never forget it. Um, I'll never forget visiting Atlanta, Georgia, um, and meeting um, you know such lovely people, and it was a fantastic experience. Um, but in terms of the question around which is my favorite kind of creative outlet, I think it shifts. To be honest, Ray, you you can probably relate to that. Um, yeah. yeah. For me, you know. The, the acting, I, I absolutely, I, I, I love acting. Um, um, the, lately, it has been writing. I've been doing a lot more screenwriting myself and even just 
creative writing, you know, which is another thing during this blasted lockdown that we can all do. Um, you know, even if it's just writing a journal or just writing a page about how you feel in these crazy times and, and getting that stuff out, you know, a lot of those sort of quite organic, simple, just honest, creative outlets are what I've been enjoying lately. So I still love to write my raps and perform them. And often now I just put them on my Instagram or I just uh, record them for myself. And um, I've got a new loop pedal that I've been mucking around with on my guitar down in, in, in a, a, at home. And so I'm still doing music in that way. I haven't had a formal kind of outlet for my music. Like I haven't got a band going at the moment or, or, or a, a proper recording project. I've more just been doing lots of little bits and pieces for myself. And, um, but yeah, you have to stay creative if you're a creative person, you know, and as I say, it doesn't really matter whether, you know, you just share it with one friend, what your creative, your creation is, or whether it plays to a million people around the world. The main thing is that moment of the honest creative expression that is the most precious part of the process. So, uh, exactly. We've got to keep doing it. I agree, and it's like a niche that you've got to scratch, isn't it? You, you, you know, I'm the same. I love music. I love writing. I love all aspects, and it's something I need to do. I know you need to do. Tom, were you always like that as a young boy? I mean, um, I mean, just a, 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 an area that a lot of the folks might not know. You grew up in in the South Island, didn't you, down in Christchurch? Yeah, I grew up in Christchurch, and and uh, I was a uh, I was a little bit of a black sheep in our family. I think, like, uh, you know, um, my family are really into motorsport and cars, and uh, you know, real petrol heads in a way. Um, particularly uh, my brother that I grew up with, and my father and my stepfather, and um, and yet I was sort of you know from a very young age quite drawn to the arts, and um, you know so I would be most passionate about the speech competition that year when I was a kid, or about drama class and and these things. So I definitely had a natural pull towards the arts from from very young Ray. And, uh, I actually just was looking through some old home videos the other day. Uh, and I found this video of my family and it was a barbecue and everyone was having a great time and interacting. And then I was in the corner of the room singing on a microphone on my own singing, uh, smells like team spirit by Nirvana and looking very isolated. <laughs> <laughs> on the outside of the group, <laughs> just, and <laughs> my voice hadn't dropped by that stage, Ray, and so I still had this very high, so high voice. So I was singing almost falsetto style, "Smells Like Teen Spirit" by uh, Kurt Cobain. <laughs> and Tom, how did you get into the business? Because you you were a presenter. Uh, was that your first foray into it? Uh... Um, how did you get into how did you get into the business? It's not easy to get into it. No, I was very very lucky, Ray, to get into the business. Um, when I was about thirteen years old, still at uh, at high school, obviously, um, I had a family friend uh, contact me and say that he'd seen an ad in the newspaper that what now a children's show uh, here in New Zealand was looking for junior reporters. Um, to uh, review video games and interview bands and do all of this kind of cool stuff. And so I applied for the job and uh, I managed to get an interview and I went in and met with this uh, man named Tony Palmer, who was the producer. And I was 13 years old, but I walked in there confidently and I gave him a f firm handshake and I said, you should give me the job, pal. And uh, he did. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I started off uh, as a reporter and 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 presenter, um, and for that show, what now? And I interviewed lots of amazing musicians when they would come to New Zealand, like my hero Ben Harper, who I looked up to greatly, and um, hip hop groups like you know Bone Thugs and Harmony, and and other groups. And I reviewed video games, and um, and it was fantastic. Um, and after a period of time, that was uh, when I got to audition for my first uh, acting role, uh, which was on The Tribe. Right. And it was a, a joy to have you walk into 
our uh, building there and uh, and 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 from there you know we knew there was nobody better that we could ever uh, hope to uh, play ram and it's interesting tom I, i'm always saying that and you'll probably know this now as a, a producer when you cast somebody you cast them for their talent but also we call it being good humans or there's a spirit i always talk about a spirit and i recognize in you tom a very special spirit and your talent was there 100 percent but there was something I related to and saw in you, some compassion or goodness or a sense of humanity. I can't really put, put my finger on it, and but that's who you want. You want somebody that can join you shoulder to shoulder, where it's not just a job or something, or you know, it's not just about you. You want them to, and I think some of the fans that you met when you did the tours will attest to the fact that you take the time to speak with them, that you take the time today, for example, um, to connect with them and I think that means a lot and that's to me is very very important as you say it doesn't matter if it's one person or a million people or if it's Hollywood or wherever it's 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 just to uh, you know to keep your feet on the ground and to uh, you know to to connect with uh, with people and so I'm very proud of you Tom how you uh, have conducted yourself and I, I really mean that and how were those tours for you when you went to Europe? Ah, uh, um, well, firstly, Ray, just thank you so much for um, those kind words and and also for the amazing, um, you know, life-changing opportunity that you presented all of us young people with to be a part of the tribe. Um, you know, it was such a, a beautiful time of our lives. And I think, um, you know, when we all reflect on that as as adults now we see that even more than we did at the time you know like it felt like a trip in a very exciting um period of our lives at the time but reflecting back i think we we see another whole angle on that and um you know the cast were really like a like another family for a lot of us us young people who were acting on the show you know and that was so cool like you know when you look back as an adult like to be traveling through Europe and uh with a bunch of you know with five or six of your best buddies when you're 16 years old or 17 years old um what an incredible experience and then meeting all of these other young people around those cities who who were so warm and welcoming and and loved us and and wanted to wanted to um, welcome us into their cities and their countries. Oh, it was just remarkable, Ray. So thank you so much for that oh. incredible opportunity. Oh, that's a pleasure, and 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 it continues to this very day. I mean, it's uh, as you say. I mean, it's uh, you know, I, I, I've often said when you young people had come into Cloud Nine, it was like coming into the army. Really, I mean. You know, but um, it's in your formative years, it, it, and I'm I'm proud that you've maybe uh, taken something uh, and humbled by that, Tom. And uh, now we must talk about Revelations because um, a lot of people won't know that Revelations came out to being because of Tom Hearn. That that uh, you know I was looking for to create something that would explore spirituality, and and we made Revelations, and I thought there was nobody better simply because of those innate qualities I'd recognize in you, Tom. So we kind of developed that and and the character Jess. And did you enjoy Revelations? Did you enjoy that series? Oh, it was a remarkable experience, um, Ray. And, um, you know, one of the coolest things about it was uh, <clears throat> every episode, of course, is set in a different um, era or time period. And so we would have a whole new cast come on board um, every episode, you know, a new bunch of people. And I, I was the only, uh, the only ac actor lucky enough to be a constant through the whole series, of course, but I got to meet and work with some fantastic actors through, uh, the running of, of that show. And I also just learned a lot, you know, I remember feeling, you know, quite very humbled Ray to be, uh, the lead, to be chosen as the lead actor of a of a series and um you know it, it was it was i found it you know a little overwhelming at times and um and uh tricky to reconcile um in, in that i just couldn't believe that i had been um chosen and given that opportunity so it was 
very special and um yeah, I loved the experience and learned and, and grew a lot as a person um, as a result of it. No, that's great. That uh, Thank you, Tom, for that. I've got another one from Manuela Wurtz. Good morning to Manuela. Hi, Tom and Ray. I always was fascinated by the character of Ram because you don't often see disabled characters displayed in such an ambiguous way. Was it hard to portray the ruthless villain on one hand and the quite helpless human being on the other? That's an interesting question. Yeah, well, it is a, it's, a, it's a very astute question. And I think like, you know, I think often those most most ruthless or most sort of vicious or most uh, angry um, or aggressive, you know, often will have a vulnerability sitting beneath that. And I think that's always what I wanted to show in Ram and what I think you had in Ram, Ray, right from the beginning, what you were creating is these kind of layers to him. Um, and I think that's the thing, you know, is, is, uh, as I say, even these, these most sort of evil characters that we see on the surface actually generally will have a very human, uh, aspect to them and, and perhaps a, a vulnerable side if you, if you push the right buttons. Um, so I'm glad that both of those, um, layers, uh, were coming through for the audience. I mean, it's it's quite interesting because the Ram has been always one of the most popular characters, Tom, in the tribe. And and I think, you know, as you say, you didn't uh, display him in a one-dimensional way. You were able to tap into that vulnerability through your your um, sensitivity and your skills as an actor. And actually, I've got an interesting one here from Gemma Wood. Hi, Tom. How did you control the wheelchair? Or was there some help to move around it? And was it comfortable? Um, <laughs> how did you control it, Tom? Well, our amazing art department people who designed and built that wheelchair, it was, they actually had a mechanism in it that was an electric uh, sort of – it was a fully functional electric wheelchair. And I had almost like a, a mouse kind of thing underneath my right hand that I indeed could and did control. Um, so, I mean, honestly, like thinking back, it's been a long time, Ray, so it's great to talk about this stuff and, and think back. I definitely think I had the coolest role to play in the whole of the tribe. <laughs> and it was so fun. Um, you know, right down to that electric wheelchair, like it was super cool. I remember one time, I think we actually had it in a blooper reel where I accidentally got it jammed on the electric wheelchair and almost ran over the cameraman and a bunch of crew inside the set. But thankfully, no one was harmed. I remember that as well. That, that uh... Now, Tom, I've got one from Madeline Brooke. Patton, are they eyebrows? As your eyebrows piercings that you had... Uh... She said, I can never work it out. I've been watching the tribe since I was 14. I'm now 24. Um, so Madeline is wondering that your, your piercings, uh, there were eyebrow piercings uh, as, as Ram. Hi, hi Madeline. Um, no, so they weren't um, uh, piercings as such. Although back in, the, in those times, I'm just trying to remember, I think I did have a... Uh, a pierced tongue back then in my own time. It was a, it was a period of, a, a time of piercings were very popular, but no, these ones on Ram's eyebrows, they were just like pieces of metal that the makeup team would stick on our eyebrows. And they used this special glue called spirit gum uh, that would stick them on there. And so they were, they were fixed on good and proper. And then uh, at the end of the night, after I'd wrapped work on set and finished filming, I'd, I'd get them taken off. But yeah, so they were just, they were pieces of metal stuck on with spirit gum. No, oh, that's great. I got one actually from David Cullen. Good morning, David. I uh, want to say a big thank you to everyone involved with these interviews. They're really giving a lot of us something to look forward to during these uncertain times. So that's nice, Tom, that uh, uh, to know that um, that that's... Uh, you know, the, the, these things are helping people through these uh, these kind of days, and uh, many people don't have much to do, really, and I guess they get sick of watching the TV or, as you say, reading news about the doom and gloom, and so hopefully this uh, can while away an hour and uh, and give 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 the folks something different to uh, to listen to. And uh, so that's a pleasure, David, and, uh, and I know all the tribal world will be grateful for your time, Tom, that... I mean, interesting, post the tribe, if we could just talk about that, Tom, because I know that a lot of your fans have followed your career and 
Um, for those who, for the very minor people that may not be aware, Tom has uh, become a very, very major producer in Australasia and indeed around the world. And so, post, how did you get into that, Tom? Was that something you always wanted to get into that side of the business? Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, when I first got into producing, Ray, um, I actually was was doing so because I wanted to produce uh, work for myself as an actor. So, you know, I thought it would be a smart thing to do to learn uh, production and producing and financing so that I could put uh, films together and then cast myself in them. Um, and so in a, our first movie that we made, which was a micro budget sort of murder mystery film called I'm not Harry Jensen. Um, I actually co-starred in that movie. Um, and I made it with James, uh, Napier Robertson, who of course the tribe fans will know. Um, and we made that for very low budget. Um, we went and raised the money ourselves through private investors and, um, that was almost like our film school, Ray, where we didn't really know what we were doing in a lot of areas. Um, but we learned on the job and, and we ended up with a film that was pretty cool and that we were proud of. And, um, out of that experience, I, you know, I just learned so much, you know, I got, I, even though the film turned out pretty well, I got quite a lot of things wrong as well. You know, I, I, you got to remember I left school when I was, you know, not even 15. Um, and I didn't have, you know, a university education and here I was, you know, producing a movie and being responsible for the budget of a movie, which was over a hundred thousand dollars. Well, that is a lot of money, but, um, but at least you did it, Tom, and it's a terrific. I, I enjoyed that, and that showed the the talents of James as a director, actually, as well. And is that how you got together on? How did Dark Horse come about? Yeah, well, that's right, you know. And at the time, I mean, the 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 hundred thousand uh, dollars seemed like you know such a colossal amount of money. But you know, this is the thing: is as we get more and more experience and we grow, then you know the goalposts shift that little bit further away. And, and, um, you know, so these days, you know, I, I'm lucky enough to be producing, you know, in some quite, you know, big ambitious, uh, projects, you know, I just, just, uh, had a movie come out not too long ago, starring Daniel Radcliffe, uh, from Harry Potter, uh, fame, um, called Guns Akimbo, uh, which is, is, you know, in release in uh, all around the world. Currently we've got a film, in post-production that I'm producing starring Chloe Grace Moret. So I've been lucky to work with, um, you know, some, some big international, internationally renowned, um, actors, um, which has been great. Um, but yeah, working with James, um, we work together on the dark horse, um, which is a film that probably the film that I'm most proud of Ray in my career, um, as a producer, um, it's a film based on a true story about a na man named Genesis Portini, um, who was an incredible human being. Um, he was a bipolar sufferer, um, an indigenous Maori New Zealander. Um, but his gift, Ray, was uh, he was an incredible chess player. And uh, the Dark Horse tells his story as he... Uh, starts a chess club for uh, disadvantaged youth um, and uh, leads them to the New Zealand Chess Championship. Um, and sort of, despite his own adversities, um, you know, takes on this challenge to lead this group of young people. And it's about uh, his journey as he does so. And I'm very proud of the film. It, it, uh, we won a lot of awards, James and I, around the world with that movie. I think it's up to about 40 international film festival awards. And it was a big hit here in New Zealand, um, box office wise and in other territories around the world. So it really helped set up our careers. And and, um, and it was an amazing experience. You know, Tom, my own grandson, Dylan, who's, uh, as you know, Dylan aspires to be a filmmaker. And and he, uh, that's on his top 10 movies. He loves that film. And, and I should say for any of the listeners, anybody, uh, if you have an opportunity of catching it, you really must. And because it is, it's a beautiful, beautiful film. And I think James did a lovely job writing and directing it. And you, Tom, amazing to bring it together as you did. And, and I think it's, uh, I can tell it's a heart project because 
it emotionally connected to me. I mean, I loved it and still love it. And, and many congratulations. And it uh, achieved all the, the recognition it really deserved. And uh, so well done on that. And so how could some of our fans uh, access it? Is it uh, available on DVD or online? Or I guess if they just Google the Dark Horse, they'll, they'll find out it uh, or try and find it somewhere. Yes. Most territories around the world, Ray, um, either have it on Amazon Prime or, or Google Play or iTunes. Um, and in some territories, it's on Netflix. So it depends on where in the world people are. Um, but if they just search the dark horse uh, or, or if they're having any troubles, they're finding it even under the dark horse. If they search the dark horse, Tom Hearn or the dark horse, James Napier Robertson. Uh, it should pop up as well, um, but yeah, it's a it's a lovely film and and about an incredible man, you know. And I was very James and I were very lucky to have the privilege to tell Genesis' story. He's such a such an amazing human. So um, yeah, he's thank you for your kind of words. He's passed on from that. He's passed away, Tom, isn't he? And but his uh, his memory will live forever through that and uh, and touch ah, a lot. Big time. Yeah, no, that's terrific. And, and Tom, have you, I mean, before this this virus, I mean, again, speaking about the virus, it's, it's very mind-blowing, really, to be almost living an episode of our tribe, isn't it, really, that we're actually living what we were acting out 20 years ago? Oh, it's just bizarre, isn't it, Ray? I, I saw the clip that you guys put up on uh, social media the other day comparing the actual uh, news footage to the tribe footage and it was just it was quite eerie in a way um, oh, and yeah so you know absolutely bizarre um, but uh, we we have to be diligent in terms of the way that we you know that we look at these times Ray and and, and uh, you know as I was saying at the beginning you know be careful to to take care of ourselves during this time so that so that we're feeling healthy and strong and are able to be there uh, for each other um, yeah. during these uncertain times. I think there was a, if there is a, ever a time for for calmness, for love, you know, for um, you know, for getting in tune. It's now really and to uh, and and to be interconnected and to be there for one another and to know that there's a collective consciousness that uh, you know for the first time probably ever I think that the whole world. I mean is going through it from India to the UK, New Zealand to, you know, Indonesia, um, Japan to China. I mean, everybody is going through this. And it's, uh, it's quite, quite amazing. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it kind of gets imagination. You wonder, you know, is there some, you know, destiny? Why has this all come about? It's, it's, it's quite, quite, quite extraordinary. And, uh, and, um, and Tom, the other element is the virtual reality, which, uh, I'm getting a lot of letters because, uh, Again, when we did that, that was through through your character actually ran that that's kind of I mean even still a bit of ahead of its time that you know you've been working with Weta and Sir Richard Taylor of uh, Weta Workshops is a a good buddy of mine as well and and um, you know that Weta I mean all this virtual reality is coming of age and hasn't really arrived at the point as as we had explored it so many years ago but through your Paradise program and. And it is the use of technology. I mean, um, you know, how do you feel about technology, Tom? Are you into it? Do you like it? Are you kind of a computer nerd? <laughs> do, you, do you enjoy it? Mm, I think it's like uh, I definitely enjoy technology. Um, I think, you know, it's just like anything else, Ray, like we were talking about, you know, it's um, it's about moderation, I think, you know, and... Um, I think technology is an incredible gift. Like you think about the knowledge or experiences that are at our fingertips now. If you, you know, if you have access to a Wi-Fi connection and a device, you know what you can learn, what you can uh, access for free is just remarkable these days. You know, um, and so I, of course, love technology. Um, but I think it's important that we balance that with uh, other sort of human to human interactions and and other experiences um, as well. 
because I think uh, you you can go down a bit of a rabbit warren with the with the technology if you're not careful and sort of lose your groundedness. Um, so, but yeah, incredible. And I think the tribe, to your other point, was absolutely ahead of its time in that way. Like Ray and I mean, sorry, not Ray, um, Ram and the Technos. Um, you know, for 20 years ago, that was pretty on point for where we're where we're at now. Um, um, you know, they were in a sense, a cyber, a cyber gang, you know, yeah. before that even existed. Um, yeah. so pretty phenomenal, really. Yeah. Some, something that I'd wanted to explore really, I mean, maybe because of my children or my, more particularly my grandchildren to, you know, I used to watch them and, and I, I like you, I mean, I embrace technology. I think it's terrific. And, and I'm, I'm, uh, uh not, not a, a kind of a technophobe by any means, but, um, I mean, but having said that, that, you know, I just recently had a birthday and the one thing I wanted for my birthday was a phone. And, um, and all I want to do on that phone is to make a phone call because I can't answer the bloody phone, Tom. You know, these things, I swipe this and I end up taking a photograph and then I swipe that and I end up getting a book from Kindle and, and I, it drives me mad. <laughs> like I just long for the days where I could just make a call, you know. And um, mm. and my, my, well, my grandchildren, they say, Grandpa, you know, your phone, the only thing you can do on there, you're like you don't have this, you don't have that. And I said, yeah, that's what I want. I just want to make a phone call. do struggle, you know, with technology because it, it, it can just, you know, it can make people feel really disconnected and, <laughs> and quite isolated um, because everything is technological now, you know. And I think, like, the thing about this virus is a good reminder – you know, that we have to, um, you know, we should never become so dependent on technology that we that we can't make a phone call without it. <laughs> or we can't connect with other human beings without it, you know. And I think segueing back to what you're saying about, uh, I mean, the way we consume product, I mean, people, uh, you know, phone and the groceries are delivered and, 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 and get instant news on the internet and, and it's just... Uh, and I see it where, where it's everything is fast. It's so quick, you know, faster speeds, faster this, faster that. And sometimes, perhaps, as we explored in Revelations, and I think in one of the trailers we say, look, you know, to slow down to the speed of life. And, Tom, it's lovely and inspirational to, you know, before we started recording, we were chatting about you with the beautiful trees and, 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 and reflecting my interest in Native American culture and indigenous culture and, and I think it's in you know it's inherent with this within us all to get in tune with Mother Earth and this planet and the natural world and to and to you know you can never ignore the whisper of mortality that inhabits every fading sunset. But uh, you can if you don't look at the sunset, you know. And um, so that's think, right. Yeah, and so it's uh, it is it's very that important. And so something good can come out of this, and we got to keep hope and to not let fears. I mean, as the, Amer the native uh, Apache would say that, you know, fear makes the wolf bigger. And to not take counsel of our fears and to feed our, our minds with imagination and fears, but to try and not pollute it with fast food thoughts, but to uh, keep positive and, and aspirational and inspirational. And together we'll get through and and it's not apocalyptic, it's not Armageddon, that we'll all get through if we keep a calm and, 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 uh, and have faith. That's the most important thing. Tom, are you religious? Um, I, I don't know if I, would, uh, if I would say religious, Ray, to be honest. Like, I, I, definitely, um, I definitely have a huge amount of respect and love for the great prophets who have come, you know, by way of all all religions, to be honest, like when I think of Jesus Christ, I have a lovely, you know, warmth sort of flood up in my body and a, and a love for him. Um, you know, in the same way I, I feel about the prophet Muhammad. Um, a couple of years ago, I actually did a, a paper um, through Harvard X on Islamic studies, Ray. And, uh, you know, I, I came to just see how beautiful, you know, that religion is. And I, I just adored it. Um, but I'm not a, I'm not practicing any given religion. I practice my Vipassana meditation every day. Um, but that's a 
non-sectarian, non-religious practice that um, is really just about observing what is for what it is. And um, for me so far, Ray, that practice has has allowed me to um, give and receive love with less conditions. And, um, you know, so for me, that's a practice worth continuing. And um, so that's what I'm going to do. No, well, well done to you. And I think that that's, I mean, that, that giving love and receiving love. I mean, I mean, we, we often, um, I mean, when you get to my real age, as opposed to my, uh, you know, my kind of fantasy age where, I'm actually not, not to, if I knew I'd live this long, I would have taken better care of myself, you know, which is quite an interesting uh, oxymoron, I guess. But um, but I do. I think the meaning of life is to give love and receive love, whether that's love of your fellow human being or music or children or our planet or Mother Earth or whatever it is. Um, but above all, to, I mean, not, not in a narcissistic way, but to get in tune with yourself and to... Uh, I mean, to, to love yourself, because if you can't love yourself, contentment is within. You'll never find it in, in Academy Awards or money or any or drugs or booze or whatever. It's within, and, uh, and that's the course that we're all searching for, the, the meaning of it. And, and, and I suppose in the end, it's faith, really. What I, think, um, I think what you have, Tom, you've got a great faith of, uh, of life, uh, meaning humanity, and, and, and a belief that there's... Uh, there's a reason for all this, and uh, well, Tom, you know our hour has flown by. I think I'm probably over the hour, and uh, and I'll get my knuckles wrapped, you know. But uh, um, I really, 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 it's been lovely to to connect. And on behalf of all the uh, the tribal brothers and sisters around the world, I was just wondering if, if in closing, if there's uh, you know any message that you would like to give them, any final thoughts, anything you'd like to say. Yeah, thank you, Ray. No, it's been so um, amazing to connect with you, and and um, I've really enjoyed it. And to everyone listening out there, um, thank you for listening. Um, and I just want to send you all my love um, during these uncertain times from here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, um, and just encourage you to, as we've been talking about today, to be kind to yourself during these times. And um yeah, take take the time that you need to to nourish yourself and replenish your own spirit. Um, and yeah, as Ray was saying, you know, remember we will get through this. Um, we are such a uh, resilient um, race, uh, the human race, uh, and we will push through this. We we will come back stronger. Um, but yeah, lots of love from me to you guys. Oh, well, that's very lovely, Tom, and uh, and I echo that to all of you, all of you in Tribe World, and I'm sure I speak uh, for, from all of you to thank Tom for taking the time to, to have a chat, and and uh, all our Tribal brothers and sisters, you take care of yourself, and uh, and lots of love also uh, from me to you as well, and 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 to Tom, thank you so so much. It's uh, always a joy, my friend, and. Uh, lovely to hear your voice and i look forward to the next time which won't be too long and far away and so you take good care up there as well and you look after yourself and you keep being you tom the world needs people like you and and i'm blessed with having you in my life and i know tribe world is more enriched with uh, with that as well so thank you and you take care and lots of love to you thank you ray all the best bye bye now thank bye you. bye Thank you.